Hello everyone, my name is Reynaud and welcome to this update presentation on Data Miner Service and Resource Manager, or SRM for short. First of all, SRM is of course not new. Our customers have been deploying SRM already for years as a powerful service orchestrator. But in the last couple of releases, we've added some important functionality that will open up a complete new range of possibilities for SRM. And in this presentation, I want to walk you through four use cases that you can tackle with the updated SRM. Now, first of all, what is SRM? SRM is a tool set that empowers teams to their orchestration and automation needs with an entire tool set. People can cherry pick from that tool set the right tool for the right job because orchestration and auto automation are not a one size fits all solution. As you can see, we've depicted that tool set over here with four different robots. You can see that some of them are a bit small and lightweight. Other ones look more powerful and more complex, almost human-like. And each of these, these tools is going to allow you to tackle a different kind of use case. And in this, this presentation, I'm going to walk you through those four different use cases. It's important to note as well that SRM will be part of the standard data miner stack so that all users can make use of that out of the box. Although it has to be said that some actions will be free of charge and other ones will be licensed. So these different use cases that you can tackle with this tool set, we've given them all a different name. As you can see over here, we talk about resource automation, service orchestration, resource scheduling, and resource orchestration. And we'll now go through the different four use cases um, and show you the benefits and how they work. Let's start first of all with the most lightweight one, resource scheduling. With resource scheduling, you can book resources for events ahead of time to avoid resource conflicts that might lead to service interruptions. This is done by keeping track of bookings on your resources. Operators can create a booking ahead of time so that they can indicate to everybody else that that resource will be used during a certain event, for example. Once that booking starts, no automated actions will be happening in Data Miner, but operators can easily open up that booking, see all the resources that are in that booking, and configure them right through the Data Miner user interface. And this is very useful for a couple of different scenarios. If you have workflows that are very changeable and ad hoc, this is a perfect solution that gives you the most flexibility that you can have. Also, if you ha do have a workflow that is more repetitive, but is very rare and maybe only pops up once a month, you might not want to make the investment to very detailed automate that workflow, and you might want to use something more flexible uh, like resource scheduling over here. Finally, also resources that do not require any configuration can be easily um, keep, keep in track of with resource scheduling. For example, uh, human staff, rooms, desks, uh, or anything that doesn't really need to be configured by data miner, uh, you can also model and track with resource scheduling. Let's maybe switch to a quick demo to show you how that is exactly works. So let's say in this scenario, I want to book a camera for a certain production event. I can go to the data miner view for my studio, which shows all the cameras that are in there. And I can see immediately the schedule of those different cameras for today. I can see, for example, that a couple of the cameras have been taken already uh, to present a news update at noon. And some other of those cameras um, are taken for maintenance the entire day. So if I need a camera for a certain upcoming event, I can just select one over here that's free, select via drag and drop the time frame in which I want to use my camera. And then I, as you can see, a schedule button lights up over here. I can simply click that schedule button and then I get a pop-up where I can uh, customize the name, for example, of my booking. And I can adapt the exact timings um, if that would be needed if my drag and drop was not uh, correct, for example. And I can just click next and you can see that the booking is now created uh, on that camera. The same thing, I could also just navigate uh, to that camera and see it's uh, data miner visual representation. And then I have the same schedule button coming up again over here. Um, if I were to make another booking on that camera, I can do that equally well from this uh, user interface. 
Similarly, I can also make a booking on a lot of resources all at once. If I, for example, uh, switch to the schedule of tomorrow and I want to uh, just block all these cameras over here, I can simply uh, drag and drop a time frame that I want to use. I don't need to make any resource selections. I can just press schedule and confirm. And automatically a booking will be created on all those resources uh, all at once. So maybe back to my event that I just uh, set up over here. Um, so what would now happen if that event uh, were to start? If he would reach 12 o'clock, we can maybe simulate that um, by going to this uh, booking manager application. Because from there, I can manage all the bookings in my system, no matter if they are on those cameras or somewhere else. I get here the central overview. And I can also manipulate the timings of those bookings and edit them if I want to. Um, and if I would now force my event uh, to just start as soon as possible, I can do that over here. And now it will be starting uh, in a couple of seconds. So back to my camera view, uh, because of course, once that event comes up, um, the resources in that booking will have to be set up uh, to correctly carry out what they need to do. Um, and this is not going to happen through any automation in the resource scheduling use case. Um, once a booking starts, as is about to happen uh, with this event, an operator will have to configure that manually uh, through the data miner UI. And this is done uh, by just selecting the booking and navigating to it. So you get some details of that booking over here, um, how long my event will be running, for example, and if there are any alarms with the resources in it. And I get here an overview of the resources that are in that booking, which is right now only a single camera. But if there would be more, I would see these appear as well over here on this overview. Um, and now to configure those easily, I can just open the data pages of that booking, uh, select my camera. And I see here that it has a couple of different configurations. And I can just select the one I need and use data miner parameters uh, and set whatever I want to configure that uh, resource. So that will need to happen manually when the booking starts. And also when it ends, you might want to put your resources back into the default state. So that's resource scheduling. It's very lightweight. It comes out of the box with data miner and you can just get started right away to book your resources in order to avoid that. Yeah, any conflicts on those resources would damage your services. Um, and this becomes uh, yeah, free of charge with any data miner system um, so that people can get used to that system and get value straight out of the box. Our second use case is resource automation. And resource automation can be used to execute uh, large resource configurations in an intelligent way with just a click of a button. This is done with the profile load scripts that we have in data miner. So this profile load script will basically translate a profile, which is sort of a preset for a certain device, which lists which parameters should be set in which way. That profile load script will translate the profile into a certain uh, yeah, sequence of parameter sets on the data miner connector for a certain resource. So this also means that for every connector that you're using to connect to your resource, you will need to define such a profile load script. And this can be done to, yeah, and with a single click, do a very large configuration on a device. For example, loading a preset on a multi-viewer, tuning an IRDs, or, or setting up an, an encoder. This can all be done in one go um, with resource automation. So to show you again uh, how that works, I'll switch back to my uh, data miner system. So again, on those camera views, um, if I want to quickly configure those parameters that I showed you uh, in the previous demo, I can just select one of uh, those cameras and then do load profile. And I will now get um, a range of the available profiles that have been created for this camera kind of a resource. And I can select one and apply it. So maybe to show you what will be happening in the back, the uh, data miner will have a look at that profile, which looks like this. So those profiles for my cameras, they are essentially a description of the different parameters that that camera has that can be configured and what value should be put on them. 
So you can see that there's a couple of different profiles uh, for the camera. And they can also have different states where you can specify um, even more granularly uh, what you want to uh, happen with that resource in a certain uh, state. Uh, and to show you that this is actually uh, happening in the back, I can also open again that resource. It's uh, UI in data miner. I will have again that same load profile button. And I can now just select a different one. For example, this B3 profile in a start state. And I can then apply that. And as you can see, automatically all the parameters in that uh, in that profile will be set on the resource without me having to interfere anymore uh, with the system. So these profile load scripts is something that you can develop yourself with our data miner automation engine. And we will also ship SRM with a profile load tester tool. So that tool will allow you to easily debug your scripts and test their performance and functionality on certain resources. And not only will it allow you to test your own developed scripts, but it will also help you to verify the functionality of an API that a vendor provided against its specs. Because for example, if you would load certain uh, configuration uh, sequences um, on it. Sometimes that can, that can give problems with the API, and this is something that can help you detect that um, and si signal this to the vendor, which uh, can then help you to resolve that. And this is also something that will come out of the box with Data Miner, the scheduling, uh, the automation engine where you can develop your own scripts and run them on your resources that you have configured at no extra cost as well. So onto the third use case, um, which is resource orchestration. Uh, this will allow you to automate some basic configurations really as part of the date of the scheduling uh, that you have set up for your resources. So it basically combines the intelligence of the scheduling engine that we used in the resource scheduling and the power of the automation that we used in the resource automation. So you can again create bookings for your resources, but at the start of your booking or when you are creating it, you can select profiles to apply on your resources and data miner will then automatically, at the beginning of the booking, uh, apply that profile on the resource so that you don't have to interfere, interfere anymore. Um, and when the booking ends, data miner can also load a profile on your resources. Um, so to bring them just back to the default state so that they are ready for the next booking. So again, those profile load scripts uh, need to be developed. But uh, if you're starting with resource automation, those will already be available. And you can just easily switch to resource orchestration. Um, one type of script is added in this use case, but uh, yeah, data miner will come with a default one for that one. So you won't have to uh, develop that yourself. And that is a lifecycle service orchestration script or LSO for short. This is basically the script that will run once a booking starts and it will just trigger data miner to load profiles on the resources in that booking uh, so that the booking can get started automatically. And when the booking ends, again, that uh, LSO script will kick in and it will trigger data miner to load certain profiles on certain resources so that the booking can end in a safe manner. So maybe to demo that as well, we can go back uh, to the camera view. I can see here my camera schedule again. And again, if I would need a camera um, for an event for today, um, let's say camera two is still free. Um, so I will book that one later today, just like I did with the first camera. But this time I will select orchestrate instead of schedule. You will see that in the first step, I get back to my uh, pop-up window where I can specify a name and a specific timing for it. But this time there is a second screen uh, to that workflow. And this one will ask me for my uh, resource that I've selected to also select a profile for it. And I can then save that. So now this booking knows that once it starts, it should automatically apply the start state of that profile that I've selected to my resource. And once that booking ends, it should apply the stop state of that profile to the same resource so that it's ready again uh, for its next use. So let's maybe have a look at that. 
Again, I can go to a central app where all my orchestrated bookings uh, are summarized. There's only one in the system currently, which is this uh, event that I just created. And I can, again, just push it start um, to start as soon as possible. And as you can see, if I go to that camera and maybe load some other profile on it beforehand, you will see that as soon as this booking will be starting, you will see the values change into anything that we specified in the booking. So if I would just uh, put some random values over here. So as you can see, the values have now changed automatically um, and I don't need to do anything anymore to make this booking running. So that's really the power of resource orchestration. We combine the scheduling capabilities with the automation capabilities. Do note though that as soon as we talk about orchestration, this becomes a paid option. Um, and this will be charged based on the number of concurrent bookings that you have in the system uh, at any point in time. And now the last and most powerful flavor of SRM is the service orchestration. With service orchestration, you can orchestrate an entire service lifecycle with very powerful automation and with any customization that you want. And this is done by introducing the concept of a service definition, which is basically a description of all resources that should be in a certain service and how they are interconnected. With that service definition, we then introduce a couple of automation scripts. We have again the profile load scripts that you already discussed that will be automating some resource configurations during the service lifecycle. But now we also have a data transfer rule script or DTR and this one will help an operator during a booking creation to make sure he selects the correct resources and profiles for them. Then we again have a LSO script as we had with resource orchestration, but this time for service orchestration, it can be customized to the extent that you want and support any custom service lifecycle. Not only a start and a stop, but also for example, a pause or a uh, switch to backup that can all be states that you can customize and automate in service orchestration. To give a bit of an overview now, because we are encountering a lot of different scripts, uh, we've sort of mapped the flow that a typical booking goes through uh, over its life cycle. And each script sort of has its own role during that uh, service orchestration. So when an operator starts creating a booking, he will first pick a service definition from the catalog that he has created. Once he selected a service definition, data miner will represent him with the list of resources that he needs to select and a profile that he needs to assign to them for that booking. When, once he has made a sort of initial selection uh, of the, these profiles and resources, uh, the DTR script will kick in, and this can help him to map already certain resources and profiles on other uh, selections based on the resources and selections that he made uh, in the beginning. For example, if he selects a certain IP address in the beginning to multicast a stream on, other resources in the booking can already know that they need to uh, start following that multicast stream and the operator does not need to enter that uh, anymore uh, in those different resources. So the scripts really help him to make the correct configuration of a booking. Once he then confirms a booking, uh, some time will pass until the booking starts. And when that booking starts, the LSO script will kick in. It will see that this is a booking start transition that I need to do. And it will then trigger certain profile load scripts to happen so that will configure the resources uh, correctly for the start of that booking. And then again, some time will pass for that booking, that service will be running. Um, when we hit a, a booking end time, again, the LSO script will kick in and it will tell to data miner again uh, to apply certain resource configurations on the resources of that service so that they can go offline safely. So yeah, in this example, it's only a service start and a service end that the LSO supports, but you can customize that completely uh, in any way that you want. And this is very useful, the service orchestration, in a couple of uh, cases, mainly when you have very repetitive service setups that come up uh, a, lot of, a lot of times that require a lot of manual effort that you need to do every time with very little variation between them. 
because then it really makes sense to do the extra investment of creating these um, automation scripts for that service definition. Um, and you will then get the benefits of having the reduced uh, effort that you need to make to operate that service uh, every time it comes up. And to demonstrate that, um, this time it's a bit of a different setup. In this screen, um, I can connect certain sources, media sources with certain uh, destinations over an IP network. And all I need to do here to create a booking is select a certain source and then a certain destination. And again, you will see some of the same details coming back as with all the other bookings. I can give here a sort of custom name and I can manipulate the start and the duration of the booking. Um, but then I simply need to press connect. And you will see that in the background, a booking will be created uh, for the service that will transport from that source to that destination. If I go to my bookings, I can see that my booking is automatically created already in the pre-roll phase as well of that booking. And after a couple of seconds, it will be online. So this booking now contains all the necessary resources that are already configured to transport that uh, yeah, media stream that I selected across my network. So if I have a look at the resources in that booking, you can see that it's an entire list of resources from network ports over uh, processing applications and even a multicast IP address. Those are all automatically selected uh, in the background uh, by my booking based on the DTR rules on that automation script uh, that we talked about earlier. So I don't need to do anything. I just select the source and the destination. I click connect and all the intelligence happens in the back. So how does this work? Uh, it works with a service definition um, that basically lists the entire um, topology of the service. So going from source over an IP port to an encoding application, which runs on a certain compute blade and needs a certain uh, application license, all the way up over the network to the destination. So I need to list this on beforehand, how that service should look like and what resources are needed. And I can then specify a DTR script which will help to select the correct resources. Uh, for example, if I selected a source, like I did in my booking setup, um, this will be on a certain port that's connected to that um, compute blade. Uh, so data miner will already know which resources to select and it can automatically work its way through all the way to the destination. Uh, so I don't need to make any uh, resource selections anymore. This is all happening automatically in the background. And on actions, I can specify that LSO script and all the different uh, states that are supported for this service. So this one has a start, also a pause and a standby, and then a specific pause state for the receive and the transmit side uh, of that stream as well. If I go back to my booking um, and open it, you can see that I have a completely customized uh, monitoring view of that service. Again, showing everything that's in that flow all the way from the source to the destination with all the alarm states of my different resources. Um, and this, yeah, I can customize this because this is specific for that uh, service definition, going from my source over an encoder, over a network to a decoder to the destination. If tomorrow I would need a different flow, which went from an encoder to a firewall over the network, again to a firewall, firewall for example, I would have to create another service definition with its own customized scripts. Um, so this contains a bit more coding but of course you get a very powerful automation solution. Um, for example, to set up these connections, I only need to select a source and a destination, click connect, and data miner will orchestrate the entire service in the background. So that's an ideal workflow because this is a very repetitive uh, service setup that only changes a very little bit between the different services. It's only the source and the destination that change, um, and it will take me a lot of manual effort to set this up. So this makes sense to tackle with service orchestration. Again, because it is orchestration, um, this will be a paid option as well that will be charged based on the number of concurrent services that you have running um, in your system. So that's uh, an overview of the different use cases that we have seen. Uh, resource automation, service orchestration, resource scheduling, and resource orchestration. It's an entire tool set. Uh, each has their own advantages. Um, and you can pick from them uh, for your different services, which one you want. 
um, which one makes most sense based on the yeah, amount of flexibility that you need and the amount of automation that you need. So some of them are, are uh, coming standard out of the box with data miner free of charge, but the orchestration ones uh, are paid options. It's important to note that you will not be picking one of those flavors for your entire system. No, um, one service will be handled by a combination of these different tools in the background um, so that you can really yeah, pick and match for your services, which type of workflow for, of that service needs to be handled by which tool. Um, for example, you can set up an entire orchestrated service um, like I did in my demo. Going back to that service. If I would need last minute a resource to be added in there, I can just uh, use the plus button. And I will now come into a resource uh, scheduling uh, overview where I can just simply add a resource. If I would last minute, for example, need a camera, I can search for cameras. One of those resources. And it will be added to my booking as well. Just resource scheduled, no automation happening, uh, but that is not needed for this camera, for example. Um, so you can really mix those different flavors, even for a single service, uh, because each part of the workflow to set up that service uh, requires a different kind of uh, automation and a different level uh, of automation. So the goal is that you can really uh, cherry pick that tool that you need for a certain job uh, to set up your service. Important to note as well is that SRM will be completely integrated in our upcoming digital transformation suite. Uh, basically, SRM will expose a library of activities that you can pick from and implement in any of your business, operational, or technical processes, which you will be able to model with the digital transformation suite. But more on that will be coming up later, uh, definitely. So as I said, um, there will be a catalog of activities with which you can build processes. And SRM will be just one of those uh, kind of activities uh, next to, for example, more infrastructure-related activities or synthetic testing or plant maintenance. Those will all be able, you will all be able to combine those into different processes um, and easily deploy them with our digital transformation suite. So to summarize a bit, the data service, uh, data miner service and resource manager update that we did will really empower DevOps teams with a tool set for their orchestration and automation needs. Uh, they will be able to start small and get instant value because part of our functionality will come out of the box and free of charge. And as they go, they can then mature the system um, and grow it into full orchestration if they want to and if it makes sense to do so. That automation and orchestration will, of course, increase the rel reliability of their system. It will reduce the risk of human errors happening during the service setup. And you can automatically embed certain security workflows in that automation so that you can deliver your service in the most secure way. It also helps you to reduce the cost of your operation um, by eliminating those very time-consuming manual actions that you would require to set up your services. It's also important that we will integrate with our upcoming digital transformation suite so that you can drive those SRM workflows from any business or operational process. And finally, of course, important to mention uh, that this is not a new thing that we're launching, but SRM has already been a leading service orchestration platform for many years. So that's it. Thank you for listening. And I hope you've learned now how you can apply data miner service and resource manager to optimally automate your different service setup workflows.